Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. I was swimming yesterday with the kids, and I might have water in here. I didn't hear you. I'm, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship as we celebrate our holiest and most joyous of days. Happy Easter to all of you. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to those who are joining us via the live stream as well, and I'd like to extend a special welcome to Larry and Iris from Belleville. It's nice to have you with us, and uh, thank you for the card as well. I'm delighted to welcome all of us, whether you are here in person or watching via the live stream. It's wonderful, again, to see so many gathered in this very beautiful sanctuary and to fill it with our song, our prayers, and our friendship. Welcome once again, everybody, to Easter Sunday, a day of great joy and celebration, a day where we are reminded again of our God's radical love and grace for us all. This Easter day is filled with wonder and awe. What does Easter Sunday have to say to our modern world, a world that continues to be filled with injustice and oppression and all sorts of negative and bad things. Well, you know what? It has everything to say. When life triumphs over death, when insignificant first century women are the very first witnesses of the resurrection, when the power of empire cannot silence a ragtag band of ordinary everyday people, something very different is at work in this world. This is our hope, our inspiration, and our challenge. May your Easter be a moment, not just of celebration, but of awakening and of mobilization to find life, to bring life, to create life in every place of death in your world. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our liturgy this morning is uh, from All Creation Sings. It is setting 12. Um, you, you're invited to use the slides that are here, and you can follow along in your worship guide. For those who are worshiping from home, again, as always, please use the slides on your screen. Now, for those who are worshiping from home, and if you would like to participate in communion, you are more than welcome to do so. You, I invite you to gather together any bread, it could be a bun, piece of bread, cracker, or any kind of drink, whether it's water, wine, or juice. Gather that together and have it ready for that portion of the service later on. Just because we all can't gather in person does not mean that we are not able to receive God's love and grace and communion from home. Now, I hope on your way in you've received not only your worship guide, but also a pink slip of paper. Uh, if you did not, there will be a chance to grab one later. Um, these are just little prayer request slips. If there is something you would like to ask God for pr in prayer or something you want to hand over, some celebration, a joy, anything at all, you can put them in the offering plates as they are passed around during the offering, and then they'll be included in the basket that's here, uh, and we'll have those prayers throughout the e season of Easter. So may we all continue to know and feel the presence and the love and the grace of God for each and every single one of us again, whether we are gathered here or somewhere else today. And you'll notice these beautiful flowers here, these beautiful lilies um, on the altar. They are given in loving memory of Charlie Sherbart, who passed away 15 years ago, and they are placed there in loving memory by his family. So thank you to you for uh, not only bringing these beautiful flowers for us on this Easter Sunday, but thank you for sharing these memories with us as well. May we continue to experience the joys and the excitement, the new beginnings and the thankfulness of this Easter day, and the gifts of inner peace and hope that it can bring into our world and into our lives. I invite you now to take a moment of quiet reflection and centering as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. I invite you to please stand as you are able. Since this is a day of celebration and a day where we do remember that we are already forgiven, 
uh, we will take a moment to do a confession and forgiveness as a way to remind us of our state of grace and forgiveness in the eyes of God. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who looks upon us in compassion, forgives us our sin, and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Have compassion, O God. Against you, you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, Cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as a parent to a child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from the west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. Let's join in singing our opening hymn, that beautiful Easter anthem, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. And also with you. I invite you to please be seated. But the Sunday school has to stay standing, yes. <laughs>
<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Oh, has the chocolate worn off already? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Oh, man. We need 30 cc's of chocolate, stat. One more time. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. There we go. Now you're awake. Happy Easter. Did you all get to do an Easter egg hunt yet? Yeah? Did you get chocolate? Yeah, no, yes, no. I don't know. It didn't sound like it, but... Um, well, good morning, everybody, and happy Easter to all of you. I hope you really have a wonderful time with your family and that you get to eat a lot of wonderful food and chocolate, too, of course, but I hope that you have a wonderful time with your family celebrating this very, very special day. Um, do you remember maybe a month or so ago, a little over a month ago, uh, the beginning of the season of Lent, we buried or we hid the word hallelujah? Do you remember when we did that? Where did we put it? Do you remember where we put it? In, in the box. Okay, can I get a volunteer, please? All right. If you can put that basket down, and if you can open the box and start handing out the uh, letters of the word hallelujah to everybody in the Sunday school, please. What? What do you mean it's empty? But I thought we put all the letters in all those different ways of saying hallelujah in there. They're not in there? Hmm, I wonder what they could be. It's kind of like what happened with the disciples and the followers of Jesus when they went to go look in the tomb to go put spices on his body, and they found it was empty. Hmm, but then they had to go look for him, didn't they? So, I need you to stand up. And this is going to be the funnest Sunday school uh, sermon you've ever had. So, um, I need you to ask the grown-ups in the pews for help. I need you to go look around and find the letters to the word hallelujah that you guys so beautifully made. Can you do that? Yep. All right, go. Bye. <laughs> so, ask around. Take a look on top of things. Take a look in pews. Oh, no, no, they're, they're up here. They're not downstairs. They're up here, <laughs> and they're not outside. <laughs> oh, I see a letter over here. Somebody's got a letter here. Oh, there's one there. There's one there. All right, go around. Go ask the grown-ups. Grown-ups, can, uh, can you help them find a letter? Is there one in your pew? Hmm. Let's take a look. Could there be one back here, Micah? Let's take a look. Is there one here? Huh. All right. Not only was this a fun exercise, but it was a, help get, it was a way to help get some of that sugar out of your system. All right, now, let's see. How do we spell the word hallelujah? Let's see if we can stand together. Let's see if we're missing any letters. H-A-L. Hey, do you know what? I think there's one over on the stairs over there. Do you want to go look over there? There's an L. Did we have them all? Did we find them all? No, we didn't. There wasn't one up there? No. All right. We're missing the letter A. Anybody see a letter A hanging around somewhere? Oh, I see it. Here, I'll go get it. I'm somebody's kid. I'll run. 
<laughs> there you go. All right, have we got them all now? We're missing an eye. All right, everybody, stand up. Let's take a look under your... Are you sure? If we don't see it in the next 10 seconds, we'll have to... All right. If you find an I, a letter I... <laughs> Here we go. All right, hallelujah. Here you go. Okay. We got them all. <laughs> all right, hold them up nice and high for everybody to see. So between the U and the A, if you just move over there. There we go. Okay, hallelujah. All right, hold them up nice and high. And I'll get down so everybody can see. Excellent. Do you guys remember what the word hallelujah means? Anybody remember? No, no, it's sort of. But it, is a, it means God be praised. And so today on this special Easter Sunday, we give praise to God for the gift of new life and hope and love and for the gift of peace. So thank you so much for taking the time to make these beautiful letters for us to have the word hallelujah. But thanks for, you know, having some fun in church with us and uh, looking around for the letters. I wish you all a very, very happy Easter. If you can hold on to your letters, I think you've got one more song to sing for us. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, everyone, brace yourselves. <laughs> okay, now we're not going to blow them at just random times throughout the service, okay? Especially during the sermon, unless it's to cheer the pastor on. Um, anytime you hear the word, hallelujah, hallelujah, go ahead. Do you hear the word hallelujah? <laughs> I invite the congregation to please stand as you are able. Christ 
The Lord is with you. And also with you. Let us pray. In the nervous silence of our doubts, we are aware of nothing but your absence, and then we begin to wonder whether the rumors of your death are true. Then suddenly you are among us, your presence so real we can almost touch you, your life flowing out into the world unconstrained. And we realize that there is nothing to fear, that the worst that the world can throw at us is insufficient to suppress the inexorable rising of resurrection. We offer our praise and our thanks for your life that cannot be quenched, that fills us now, and that calls us to be resurrection people in a world that too often believes the deceptions of death. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I invite you to please be seated as we hear our first reading. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every people, anyone who is God-fearing and practices righteousness is acceptable to God. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that Jesus did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised Jesus on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Jesus commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about Jesus that everyone who believes in him receives the forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. <coughs> tents of the righteous, the right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted, the right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. <coughs> Righteousness, I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 11. 
Now I want you to understand, my dear family, the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 believers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, Christ appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and God's grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim and so you believed. The word of the Lord. I invite you to please stand. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. (laughs) When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early, on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. Okay, let's do it one more time to get it out of your system for the next 10 minutes, okay? Hallelujah. Excellent. All right. (laughs) All right. So, friends, happy Easter to you all. May the life-changing power of this day be yours, and may the newness of life and faith that comes with Easter also be yours in every aspect of your lives. A little over 2,000 years ago, something of great significance happened and changed the way that the followers of Jesus thought about and practiced their faith and how they lived their lives. Something happened that day that the people were not expecting. Something happened that day That changed everything. My dear friends, today we celebrate that something. We have another chance to be thankful for all that we have been given and blessed with. We are here today to celebrate the gift of a second chance, the infinite second chance. We are here today to celebrate and rededicate ourselves to the gift of a new life a transformed life. 
Now, there's a story that I like to share at Easter, and I share this story every year, and since you have yet to hear it, I felt it's appropriate to share this story with you today. About 16, 17 years ago, when Kyla and I were younger, (laughs) uh, we were participating in an Easter vigil at St. George's Anglican Church in Kitchener. Every year, St. George's hosts this vigil, which starts after Good Friday service and ends at Easter Sunday morning. Members and friends of that congregation are encouraged to uh, to sign up for a vigil watch, lasting one hour per watch in a beautiful side chapel that is at St. George's. You could be alone or you could invite a friend or two. Now, Before kids, Kyla and I picked the times of 3 to 6 a.m. It was, despite these very early hours, a very beautiful and peaceful time. We both enjoyed the quietness of that time in that very beautiful space. That little side chapel at St. George's Anglican is really quite beautiful. It was quiet and it was peaceful. That one morning, at around 5.30 a.m., I looked over at Kyla, and she had tears in her eyes. And when I asked her if everything was okay, she told me to take a look at the cross at the top of their wooden altarpiece that's in the chapel. Now, with the way that the light was shining on that cross, you could see that there was a large spider's web that had woven itself across the arms of the cross. Now, Maybe it's because of the early hour of that morning and being really tired and sleep-deprived that I didn't quite comprehend the deeper connection that Kyla had made. So when I asked her about it, she said, think about how appropriate that image is for Easter. On a symbol of violent execution and death, another life was being sustained. There was just something very profound in that moment that made a spider's web on that cross very appropriate. Out of darkness and the various forms of death that we experience in our lives can come newness of life. Today is a day of great joy and celebration. Regardless of what we believe happened that exciting day 2,000 years ago, it has changed and continues to change and have the capacity to change our lives forever. This year, I think it's fair to say that Easter holds a very resonating significance for us all. I know it doesn't seem like it, but we still live in the reality of COVID and so much war and violence and jaded cynicism. What we have all gone through in these past four to five years had pushed a lot of us to our limits. There were many people among us who were extremely isolated. There were people in our world who experienced abuse in one form or another. Most of us did not feel human contact from family and friends for a very long time. Mental health was strained. Some of us fought with illness and disease at a time when being in the hospital was not necessarily the safest place to be. What can Easter Resurrection say to the reality that we all lived in for the last three, four years? What can the resurrection say to the horrible violence of war and destruction in many of parts of our world? What can the resurrection say to profound poverty in a country like our own with so much excess and incredible wealth? I think that answer is unique to each of us right now, but there is one thing that we all share in common. We all, regardless of where we are in life, have a need for hope and renewal. Each of us will understand that and experience that in different ways. And you know what? That is good. That is really, really good. There's just no one cookie-cutter way to make all of us experience new life and hope and renewal or transformation in exactly the same way. These wonderful things come to each of us as we need to experience them, so that those things can make a difference for each of us in our own unique contexts and situations. Whatever it was that happened that Easter day 2,000 years ago, each person that experienced the presence of Jesus 
experienced what they needed to experience to overcome their fears or their insecurity or some sort of prejudice or a lack of faith. And you know what? I love that these wonderful things didn't just happen to the great heroes or the great characters of these biblical stories, but they happened to the many ordinary people, people like you and me. On the flip side, I also find it fascinating that even the heroes of these biblical stories had to struggle with it, and they had sometimes to experience incredible hardship and suffering before they came to a new profound reality or a realization of a new reality and a new identity, or maybe a, a renewed faith or some new perspective. And I think of people like Paul and Peter and King David and Mary Magdalene and Philemon and even Jesus Himself. Easter is about the mystery of the resurrection, about the power of resurrection, about the reality of a new life and experiences of darkness or amidst experiences of darkness and different forms of death. Could you uh, swip, flip to that one slide? Thank you. This is a photo that I took uh, when I was in Syria in 2006, just before the uh, horrible civil war there started. This is in a place called Ugarit. It was um, about 10,000 years old. This is a tomb that was 8,000 years old. And uh, this was me inside taking a picture of the light shining in and kind of what it might have looked like for Jesus as he leaves the confines of death. Now, I can't remember who gave this following quote. It might have been the late Marcus Borg. He once wrote, Easter is the story of God's call in an individual life and in the life of a community to death and resurrection and new life, to let go of those things that are no longer working and to embrace those things that will help us to serve those God has called us to serve and to proclaim hope and new life in this community today. What powerfully meaningful words for a day like Easter. Today is a day in which we rededicate ourselves to the pursuit and the experience of a new life, which is given to us by God in the life and teachings and example of Jesus. Now, just as it is in the New Testament, Easter can be understood in many ways. Its significance can touch every aspect of our lives. In the first years and in the earliest decades and centuries of the early church, decades before theology turned history into doctrine, the resurrection meant several different things. For some earliest Christians, it meant that the kingdom of God had finally arrived in this world. For other Christians, it meant that the Roman Empire and its worldview we're not the true lords of this world. In our own time, the 21st century, Easter can mean the exact same things, of course, with our own domination systems. Right now, it can mean that this political polarization, war and violence, will not last forever, so long as everyone who is touched by God's love and grace does their part in helping to make things better or right. In other words, the resurrection is God's way of saying that the lords of this world are not. But it means so much more than just the political and military powers of our world. We human beings can be held captive by many emotional, psychological, personal, and sometimes even spiritual powers and attitudes which are not life-giving, which are not healthy or which are not conducive to a positive outlook on life. Easter can be for us a very profound liberation from these things. Like I said at the beginning of the sermon, Easter has the power to change absolutely everything. This is certainly what happened in the first century with many of Jesus' followers, and that is certainly what continues to happen for many of us living today. 
This new perspective, this new reality can change how we see ourselves. It changes how we live in the world. It changes how we do our human relationships and how we live with the people in other parts of the world around us. It changes how we understand God and our relationship with God. Like the coming of spring with its beauty and color, its new life and light, so too can resurrection living add beauty and color, new life and light to our lives and into the world in which we live. Over the past seven months or so, as I have been visiting and calling around and getting to try to meet everyone and trying to get to know all of you, I have learned about some wonderful things that you have experienced. Now, I'm not going to name people's names, but I do want to point out a few things that I've heard that have left me as your pastor with a sense of thankfulness and a little bit of wonder. There are those of you in this congregation who have undergone some life-changing surgery. Life would never, like life would be over with the slip of a surgeon's knife or if this type of scientific medical knowledge didn't even exist in the first place. Those of you who've had these kinds of surgeries have been given a new lease on life. There are those who have come through and are continuing to struggle with cancer. Those of you who are going through cancer right now have told me of great hope for your time that you have and about the li living your life to the fullest while it can still be lived. There are some of you in the congregation who have undergone medical procedures on your eyes and have been given the gift of a renewed vision. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying here and don't try to read into anything, but I'm not suggesting that all of us go out there and become ill or have some horrible things happen to us just so that a radically new outlook on life can be achieved. But what I am saying is that we have living examples in this congregation, in our families, of radically changed lives right here already in our midst. We also have those who have died to show us the power of a new life. And I hope that all of you can take a moment today to think of those who have died and the examples that they were to each of you. Every single one of us on this planet in all of the history of humanity has been called to experience a radically changed way of living and thinking. And for some of us, it comes through the experience of something tragic like death or of horrible illness. For other people, it comes when a new perspective is gained or when a, a new truth is revealed. For others, it comes when harmful ways of thinking and behaving are overcome. Whatever it is, we are all called to live life in a radically new way because of the experience of the resurrected Jesus, whatever that means to each of us. At Easter time, we are reminded once again of our baptismal promises that God made with us. Because we are baptized into Christ's death, we are also baptized into Christ's new life. Now, this is the hardest part about Easter, and I'm still working on it myself. The hard part of Easter is this. An old way of being who we are must die in the waters of baptism. We put an old way of being who we are onto the cross with Jesus, and a new creation, a new way of being, rises from the tomb with Him. Put it another way, Easter is a reminder of our baptismal calling to become what we are meant to be, people of God, people who are set free from those things which keep us from realizing our truest potential and our truest identity. So may the hope and the renewal that comes from resurrection and new life be yours today and throughout this entire year. May we see through the lenses of hopefulness, not through the lenses of fear. May the blessings of Easter Day be yours, and may Easter change you in ways you never thought possible. Amen. I invite you to please stand as you are able. We'll join in singing our hymn of the day, number 367.
Don't you all wish you had something to, you know, blow onto now and play with today? We now take a moment to confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. <clears throat> Amen. The love, the grace, the peace, and the light of the risen Christ are always with you. You know what to do. Let's share signs of love and peace with each other.
At this time, I invite our council members to come forward as we receive our offering. I invite you to please stand as we join in singing our offertory hymn. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. We'll enjoy this beautiful choir anthem.
trusting Jesus' promise that we will be heard, we offer our prayers for the world God loves, the church God calls, and for all people according to their needs. We will respond to God of resurrection and new life with, hear our prayer. How do we find the faith to believe the story of Easter, Jesus? How do we grasp its truth? We can only accept it, refusing to reduce it to scientific debate or historical literalism, kneeling with humility and awe beside the blood-stained cross and the empty grave. For then, we are your witnesses. How do we understand the mystery of your death and life, Jesus? How do we explain it? We can only live it, allowing it to permeate every grain of this sand that forms us, every thought, every priority, every act, and every interaction. For then we are your witnesses, and you deserve nothing less from us. God of resurrection and new life. Hear our prayer. At a time like this, when the triumph of death seems inevitable, and the suffering around us makes us want to turn away, we commit to resurrection. In the secret chambers where power brokers meet, we commit to making the voice of life and justice heard. In the crisis moments when quick decisions must be heard that hold human lives in the balance, we commit to making peace and coexistence the challenge we raise. In the forgotten corners where the powerless and poor daily walk the valley of the shadow of death, we commit to equity, compassion, and giving. In the dying places on our planet where human carelessness and consumption have threatened the survival of all, we commit to simplicity and sustainability. God of resurrection and new life, hear our prayer. As you stand among us now, Jesus, in your resurrected glory, may we know the power of your life. May we turn away from death, and may we become agents of resurrection wherever we find us, ourselves. God of resurrection and new life. We also pray for those who are alone, ill, afraid, depressed, overwhelmed, and angry, that hope, joy, justice, and new life will find them. We pray especially for those on our prayer list, and those that we name in our, the silence of our hearts right now. For peace in our world, in Ukraine, in Yemen, in Syria, in Palestine, in Sudan, in Afghanistan. For welcome of all, women and men, young and old, new members and lifers, for the broken and the whole, for the faithful and the skeptical, for all sexual orientations, races, beliefs, and cultures. For our earth, that humans would tread softly upon its surface, taking care to replenish what has been taken, to reduce harmful emissions and pollution, to ensure a beautiful planet home and resources for future generations. For the church, we give thanks for our ELCIC and Eastern Synod, which do so much good work in our communities and in our world. Continue to guide and bless our National Bishop Susan and our Synod Bishop Michael as they continue to provide leadership and support in these challenging times. For St. Peter's, may our members find courage and hope as they face the various challenges of their lives. May St. Peter's be blessed with peace of heart and mind, renewed vision and mission, and hope for the future. May we, in our own ways, be a warm heart and smile and an open hand and mind. We await your coming in every moment and in every experience. God of resurrection and new life, hear our prayer. Just when it seems that all is lost, that our brokenness, our failure, has gone too far. You call a new day to dawn. Just when it feels like hope is foolish, that darkness and despair are the only true realities, you call the sun to rise. Just when we think we're alone and abandoned, 
that life is nothing but pain and emptiness and meaninglessness, you arrive among us again. God of Holy Week, Passover, liberation, restoration, God of resurrection, new life and new beginnings. We praise you for every new day that absorbs the darkness, for every rising sun that calls the night to end, for every messenger of hope and forgiveness that baptizes us with your love. God of celebration and justice, hear our prayer. May we so believe in your presence and the light you shine on us that we expect to see it, experience it, and share it at every turn, in every moment, and live and work as those through whom it shines. Amen. I invite you to please stand as you are able. For those of you who are viewing from home, uh, whether it's today or sometime later this week, I invite you to gather together your bread and your drink, place those items in front of you, and invite you to hold your hands in a gesture of blessing like this above those items as we speak these words together. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should everywhere and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed the power of death and in rising has brought us to newness of life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. For the power of love and human life in history, we offer our thanks and praise. Long ago, our ancestors knew love's power, and they became the tellers of love's tale. Love bound them in covenant, teaching them to live in community with compassion and concern for the poorest among them. Yet centuries of domination and violence shaped a different kind of community based on selfishness and inequality. In that struggle against oppression, Jesus became the face of love, showing us the way to abundant life. In both word and deed, Jesus announced love's new reign of justice, reconciliation, and peace. Filled with the courage and the passion of love's Holy Spirit, Jesus gave his life to challenge the unjust systems of our world. On the last night of his life, as Jesus and family and friends gathered for Passover, Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to all gathered, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to all gathered, saying, This cup is the renewed covenant in my blood, it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. God of love, spirit of compassion, bless us and this bread and wine. May this meal be food and drink for our journey, renewing, sustaining, and making us whole. When we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we experience again the presence of Jesus in our midst. And now, gathered into one by God's Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, you are now invited, as you feel so called, to come forward for communion. Uh, for those who have a need for gluten-free wafers or uh, for grape juice, that is also available. Please let me know as you come forward for communion. And for those of you who are worshiping from home and are going to have communion, I'm going to commune with you now, so I invite you to grab your bread and your drink. This is the body of Christ given in love for you. And this is the blood of Christ also shed in love for you. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the free and forgiven people of God. Come, for now all is ready.
I invite you to please stand as you are able. May this meal nourish us and refresh us. May it strengthen us and renew us. May it unite us and keep us in God's gracious love and loving grace now and forever. Amen. Pray. Life giving God, in the mystery of God's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I invite you to remain standing just as we hear a couple of quick announcements. Um, at our last congregational meeting, at the annual meeting, we forgot to make mention um, we are looking for a lay delegate to attend this summer's Eastern Synod Assembly. It is being held in Toronto. If you are interested in being our lay delegate, please let myself or any member of the council know. Uh, we need to know by April the 14th. Um, in two weeks time so that we can get the uh, early bird savings on the on the registration fee and start the search for hotel space um, okay the today is the final day for handing in the hopes and dreams survey that was handed out at that annual meeting if you did not get a copy please let me know there are a few copies left in the narthex but if we can get those back at some point today please uh, in two weeks, we are very excited to have Deb McCracken visit us. She will be our guest preacher, um, and she comes obviously from the Olive Branch for Children in Tanzania, and we're so excited to have her come and visit us and uh, share some news and information about what's happening there uh, with us. And I've also been asked to um, give a thank you to Debbie, or sorry, Diane Byerman for the beautiful uh, flowers that are at the entrance doors. Um, apparently she does this every year, so thank you uh, to Diane for, for those, and thank you to Deb for the flowers that are also here in front of the lectern and the baptismal font. Are there any other announcements? Am I overlooking anything? Yeah, oh, yes, thank you, Deb, you've got something. And this guy's getting his steps in for the day. I like this. <laughs> I have been asked to announce that the um, Concert of Stars for the Mitchell um, Music Festival is this coming Friday at uh, 7 p.m. There are posters on the bulletin boards if you are interested. Thank you all for your presence here today. Again, happy Easter to each of you. I hope you can get out there and celebrate. And, uh, you know, just because this incredible thing has happened, did it make everything right in the world? Absolutely not. It takes work and it takes effort, but it does give us the hope and the courage to carry on and to do what we need to do in order to experience the gift of new love and life. So, happy Easter to you all, and I invite you now to receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face shine on us with grace and with compassion. The Lord continue to look upon us all with deep love and give us and our world deep and lasting peace. Amen. Let's join in singing our sending hymn, Thine is the Glory.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and your neighbor. Thanks be to God. Thank you.